How are you feeling? Will this be your first Lord's Test? It will be, yeah. I was uh, running drinks here in, in 2015. Um, pretty special occasion. I, first thing that struck out to me was uh, everyone starts popping champagne bottles with first ball. So on the side, I remember dodging corks for the first hour. But um, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, how was training today? Optional, was optional session today and, and what did you get up to? Uh, it's just the mainly the bowlers actually. I'm um, just having a hit. Um, everyone else is having another day. Obviously, they played um, in Worcester, so uh, for us, yeah, just trying to spend time um, working on our batting. It's always really important. Us tail end the runs, so um, bit indoors, bit outdoors, and we just got moving. So had a light bowl. 100 Test wickets uh, at Edgbaston. You must be very pleased with that. Yeah, I was. Um, I, I kind of had it in my back of the mind, um, but forgot about it till um, Lino ran up to me and, and patted me on the back. So. Yeah, really, you know, really special. Obviously, you know, two years ago I was kind of trying to look for my second game. So to, to get 100 wickets is, um, you know, pretty proud of that achievement. And to get it so quickly too, 21 games. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'd like to keep that pace up. I, I don't think I will. Um, yeah, just obviously, you know, had a good run the last couple of games. So hopefully, can keep it going. I'm really enjoying it. Which end do you prefer to bowl here? And do the guys all have a? A preference, or you know, how do you how do you discuss that? Because you know, it's fairly unique here, obviously. It's a funny one. It seems like everyone has a theory on which end to bowl here. People reckon they they nip it down the hill. People reckon they nip it up the hill. Um, I got no idea. I'll let you know after the game. But um, yeah, you normally kind of settle into an end. I haven't bowled enough here. I've played one days and haven't found too much of a difference. But um, yeah, I don't know. What about the the slope? I mean, like how much have you guys talked about as a group? And I suppose even you know. Last week when Mitch Johnson was you know, around commentating, did you have a chance to catch up with him or anything like that? Oh, I think every time we play here it comes up and it's just one of those nuances of, of this ground, but it's it's still a cricket pitch. I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Um, again, I haven't played a lot on it. People seem to have their end that they like to nip the ball from. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sure it'll come up, but it, it's not a massive factor, I don't think. Had you come through your workload at Edgbass, then you feel pretty good, or did you really need that extra couple of days off to hold the most overs out of the quicks? Yeah, no, I felt pretty good, thanks. Um, obviously, first test, I came in pretty fresh to that test match, and yeah, luckily we had a big break, so um, I knew that was the the kind of the carrot at the end of the game was we we're going to get 10 days off, so it was pretty easy to, to tear in that last day. But um, no, I feel really good. I haven't really done much the last few days and just build up nicely, so um, I feel 100%. A lot of talk about the squad mentality, the bowlers, but you like to play all five? Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, I think everyone would like to play all five. Um, yeah, I think it's one of those things. That it's just great that we've got that flexibility. So I, I think every game you're going to um, you know, pick pick your best three bowlers that you think you're going to win that match. It, it just I guess we're lucky we've got six guys here who are a real chance of playing every game. So um, personally, I'll, I'll be hoping to play every game. And um, you know, if I'm fully fit and bowling well, I expect to. But um, yeah, it's good we got plenty of bowlers here. How about that spell on the? Um, final morning when you were able to sort of find a bit of steep bounce in the wicket that not many people thought was probably going to be there. Um, is that the sort of spell that you want to kind of make as your signature in, in Test cricket where you make something happen at the key moment? Yeah, I think it's those kind of spells that you remember the most when it's, um, you know, to win a Test match, day five wickets. Um, you know, it didn't feel like there was a lot in it for us bowlers up until that point, but yeah, one of those moments where I just felt, you know, we're in a really good rhythm. Um, the ball's hard. It seems to be a bit bit of zip in the wicket. And, um, yeah, that's when I love it, you know, when it's trying to break up a partnership or, um, you know, get that crucial wicket to win the match. Oh, I love that. So, yeah, I enjoy that role when, when it comes off. When it doesn't, it's normally pretty hard work. But, um, yeah, I enjoy that day five. Is that rhythm a bit elusive early in the test? And what clicked? What changed? Yeah, it was, I felt like with each spell I got a little bit better and better. Um, again, I, I haven't played a lot of red ball coming to the first um, the first day's player and I think just trying to find that, that tempo of test cricket, it's it's slightly different to, to white ball. Um, and yeah, I think mixing to that, the excitement and the nerves of, of you know first, first spell in Ashes um, over here. So I was pretty pumped up and um, yeah, I felt like probably by the lunch session I, I was, I was you know, into my work and I was pretty happy with how I was going. but. Yeah, definitely by the end of the game, I felt a lot better than that first ball. Steve Smith posted on social media that it took a couple of days for him to come to terms of what he achieved at Edgbaston. Was that the kind of attitude across the team that it was pretty special what you'd done there? I think the good thing was, you know, good or bad, was uh, you know we we're behind the game the first couple of days, and with each day we just felt like we we're getting more and more into the game. So it was kind of a con continual build up of, are we really going to do this? Oh, we're we're in top now. All right, it's ours to win. So. 
Um, it's one of those moments you finish the game, you sit sit together and have a beer in the change room, and you kind of reflect on on what you've achieved and. Um, yeah, the good thing we've had a bit of a break, so we'll be able to reflect on that before we, you know, now come up here and, and concentrate on the next game. But yeah, I don't think it was lost on, you know, many of us. It was uh, for probably more than half the team was our first Ashes win over here in England. So it's big. Um, so one person you won't be facing is James Anderson. What's the general attitude from the Australian side that he'll be out and Joffre Archer comes in? Uh, we haven't really spoken about it too much, to be honest. It was, it was obviously unfortunate for them that um, you know he went down early in the last game. It's it's no secret, you know, he's a massive loss. He's um, been the you know, highest wicket taker, you know, arguably, arguably the best bowler um, in the Ashes the last few series. So um, as soon as he went down, you know, I felt like it was a, a real opportunity, especially that second innings, to, to try and get some overs into their bowlers and, um, and bat well, and luckily we did. Um, to be honest, we haven't spoken too much about this week, but all our boys have played with Joffre in, you know, World Cup or um, against him in World Cup or with him in the, in the IPL or or Big Bash League, so he's not an unknown. We'll see, you know, we'll, we'll do our homework, but we've all faced him. Australia seems to be sort of juggling their options depending on the pitch, and they've got a lot, lot of options out there. Is there a feeling that you've kind of forced England to some changes already? Oh, I think, you know, the injury like to Jimmy Anderson's obviously, you know, one. Um, you know, bringing the spinner back into the squad is, you know, another one which, um, you know, it might seem like a big call, but, you know, Leach obviously had a good game here only a couple of weeks ago, so. We'll just keep doing our thing. Um, you know, the good thing is we we've got a full squad to pick from. Um, everyone's playing really well. Even you know, the unfortunate guys that missed out on the bench, they've done well in Worcester or in the Warnock game. So you know, whoever's the eleven we come against doesn't really bother us too much. As you said, uh, the bowlers in the nets today, and the tail's been wagging. What Sully did in the first test. Is there a focus on that? There is. Yeah, it's something we we always try and talk about and pride ourselves on. Um, you know, as a kid, you all grow up loving to loving to bat and score runs. So we. Um, just trying to keep that kind of enthusiasm going here and, and Brad Haddon's in charge of that. He's been taking us for some net sessions and uh, it's been a good challenge but anytime we're out there batting means we're not bowling so we, we normally enjoy a, a bit of a stint out there. And uh, the, we sorry, the weather forecast uh, for Wednesday, overcast and 90% uh, chance of rain I think. Would you like the opportunity to bowl first? Uh, first I heard of that but um, yeah it's, it seems like the old adage over here, you know, you look up before you look down. Um, the ball swing around, of course, I'd love to have a ball. You uh, took a while to overtake Mitch Stark in the batting order. Pat, uh, James Pattinson comes to the team, he's above you now. Uh, got any, are you eyeing him off next? Yeah, I'll get him next. Uh, I think he, he hit four sixes last game. He walked straight off the field and someone's like, oh, mate, you hit a six or two? He goes, four, hit four. <laughs> um, but he's, he's a beauty. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a proper batter, Jimmy, and, uh, and enjoys it. So I'm happy he's sliding down past him. That one guy that uh, you got out twice in the first test was Josh Butler, and obviously there's a lot of talk about controlling the scoreboard and keeping it quiet, and um, just I suppose the way you were able to sort of home in on his on his off stump in in both innings was that was that a, an example of, of planning coming off pretty well? Uh, I, f I felt like both times um, you know, I was into you know, my work and um, my rhythm was was feeling pretty good, so yeah, we all got our plans, but most of the time it's around that off stump or fourth stump, and um, yeah, I thought we. For the most part of the game, we bowled well to everyone. Um, fortunately, it came off against someone like Joss uh, both times early, but we've got our plans to all of them. Um, yeah, none of them too flamboyant. They're normally just around that off stump, but um, yeah, he's obviously a dangerous player. If you can get him early, it goes a long way to win the game. Last one now. Um, Joss said yesterday that the England team are still tired from their World Cup win. What do you make of that? Ha have a couple of sleeps, I don't know. Yeah, they might be tired. I'm sure they're happier winning the World Cup than losing it, though.